Join me on a fascinating voyage. We'll be crossing the Atlantic Ocean from London to New York aboard Cunard's world-famous Queen Mary II. Travel the sea in style on this vintage-themed seven-day passage. I'll be hosting private parties with my band in the largest ballroom at sea. I cross the ocean blue. Plus, daily activities will give you an opportunity to show off your vintage style. I can't wait to set sail. Hello, folks. Happy, happy, happy Sunday. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. My name is Dandy Wellington, here with Ahoy Vintage Cruises and our conversation with Besame founder Gabriela Hernandez. We're going to be doing a little conversation, a little 1930s uh, uh, makeup tutorial. Hey, there you are, Gabriela. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? It's so nice to be with you this morning. Oh, such such a pleasure. I mean, just first of all, I, I if you guys don't know anything about Besame, I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've been doing <laughs> all your life. But uh, I mean, Besame was created by Gabriella. She is an artist, a cosmetic historian, designer, right? She she originally from Buenos Aires, and she she came here when she was twelve years old, and brought with her this fascination, not only with classic beauty and glamour, but this makeup routine, this beauty routine that her grandmother brought to life every day. And it's manifested, it's, it's, it's grown and developed into this makeup brand. After being in the industry for years as an art director, as a photographer, as a creator, Gabriella, I mean, can you just please tell us a little bit about Besame and and how you even got into this this amazing amazing industry? Well, it it's kind of just happened by accident really because I I wasn't intending on being in the makeup industry. I just kind of, you know, I was doing design for other people because that's what my career is. I I've been a designer and photographer for many years, so I was doing this for other companies and and it just one day i just thought okay i'm gonna i have so many fond memories and and uh so many really cool things that uh, my grandmother left me that i thought okay this this has a certain something to it that i don't see uh in the industry right now so i wanted mm. to kind of do something that i thought was cool and i i started with one little tiny lipstick and i i wasn't yeah. really intending on selling it or anything it was just kind of a i i i would say just a, an exercise you know for right. myself um and then yeah. uh, and then i put it out on a very very crude website that i that i started 17 years ago yeah. uh and then people started telling each other and it just kind of you know developed from there and then i made one more thing and and it kind of just grew and uh and it kind of encompassed you know most of my career where I started, you know, just doing Besame full time and not really doing any other outside projects. Right. I mean, I love that, that, that your passion, you know, a, a thing that sort of came out of you growing up was the reason why this brand even came to fruition, right? You just sort of fo followed your passion, your love of this, you know, this aesthetic, this, yeah. You know, Bit of your history yeah, you do when you're small you know when you're uh, uh, you know a young girl you you look at uh your role models uh, yeah. like your aunts and your grandma and yeah. your mom and you think they're the most beautiful people in the world i mean yeah. you just say i want to look like i want to be a woman like that you know uh in in the makeup was part of that whole mystique you know wow. they just like put this on and that and then they just were just a beautiful lady. And, uh, and you look at that like some kind of magic and that's yeah. what you want to replicate. And that's what I wanted people to feel when they use Besame, that kind of 
uh, that kind of magic of turning into a lady, you know? Oh, that's beautiful. See, this is exactly it. Like what a better pitch for a brand, right? To just, to for, for people to feel that beauty, whatever, wherever that beauty comes from in themselves for that to be, you know, to, to manifest on their, on their face and their visage. Yes. And yes. We yes. are joined. I got to say, we are joined by two other fabulous people. I know folks are like, oh yeah, Gabrielle is there, but who are these other two fabulous ladies? <laughs> we are joined by Lark Bahar and my great friend, Raisa Britannia, two fabulous, fabulous ladies who use Besame a lot. I, <laughs> I, it, was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. We're going to get Raisa back in just one moment, but I do remember I, I messaged Lark, I, I messaged you and I was like, hey, you use Besame, right? And she was like, <laughs> yes, in capital letters. <laughs> All over, everywhere, <laughs> for years. Are you wearing uh, Besame right now? Yes, um, my beautiful face. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. wearing the lipstick, the blush, the new eyelashes from the uh, Decades collection, the yes. you know, eyeshadow, all yes. of the above. So I love Besame, good That's stuff. That's right. That's amazing. I love it so much. And and listen, I mean, I from from being in the vintage scene for for a while, and uh, certainly performing at Dapper Day, I have seen what Besame has done for this community. And mm -hmm. not only just uh, sort of bringing elegance and and classic beauty into people's lives in a really accessible way, but also opening up that lens to uh, lots of different skin tones. Can you talk about uh, Gabriella, can you talk about what it is like to be a founder of a company and being a person of color and how that affected the way that you approached your different products? Well, it, you know, it's like you, you always want to be in inclusive of everybody and you want to make people feel like they're beautiful in their own skin, no yes. matter what that, that looks like. And, and, uh, and really when you make you know, good quality and you put a lot of pigments in, in product, it, it works for pretty much any skin tone, really. Mm. When when things begin to fall apart is when you start using fillers and other things because, of course, the color then does not really look like color and as a translucent layer on your skin, but it kind of mm. looks like a mask. Right. And at that point, color becomes a problem because it doesn't look natural on different skin tones. So we try to do things that will kind of uh, blend with the skin seamlessly so that mm. any color of skin would look natural with this on. Uh, so uh, all of our products are, are used on, on all types of ladies, yeah. uh, including very famous ones uh, in, in uh, all of the Avengers movies and so right. forth and so on. Uh, uh, because uh, because all of my uh, my friends that work on these films uh, use use the product for all kinds of uh, very beautiful women on screen, um, including uh, ladies of uh, of color, all kinds of, of beautiful women. So uh, so I'm very proud of that. What a range! What a range of inspiration from you know starlets of the 1930s and 40s to the avengers i love the that. avengers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not yeah. a, that's not a bad range yes. um so i mean we're we're here today to talk not just um about about besame as a brand as a force within within this community but also to talk about the 1930s in particular and and what makeup uh, came what makeup styles came out of the 1930s and also I mean how they are they continue to just be timeless so I you know I have to ask you this is a little bit of a broad open question but when you think about makeup in the 1930s what are the things that you think about well it was um it's an interesting time because it, you you came from the 1920s in in the 1920s the industry was very young as far as uh, production of cosmetic products here in the U.S., but also it was very young as to people feeling kind of comfortable wearing makeup. Right. It was it, at, at that point it was a bit taboo still to wear makeup. So uh, the '30s was kind of a really interesting transition period between a period where people really 
were not using that many products. And the ones that were, were uh, very much the, the people that were um, in the fringes as far as being mm -hmm. more mavericks or more adventurous type mm -hmm. of people. Um, where in the 30s, you have a, a, a bit more of a, an acceptance of, of makeup as something uh, to do within fashion and to be, to be an accessory to your, your fashion and your outfits. Um, and it became um, softer, you know, it, right. it, it got to a point where the makeup was, was better, you know, the formula started to be better than the initial formulas that we had. So, so the makeup was more believable, more mm. user friendly, let, let's say, in the 30s and it was in the 20s. So, right. so the looks, I think, are softer, more feminine and pretty, just, mm -hmm. just very, very pretty, pretty makeup that doesn't overwhelm. It, it right. wasn't, the point was not to overwhelm or make a statement at that point. It was yeah. really just to accessorize the face and, and do it in a way where it didn't take over attention. It was just kind of really just a finishing touch. Uh, that's interesting, especially thinking about how the various makeup looks that, um, were 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 coming in into into vogue uh during mm -hmm. the 1930s could have also um helped with the stars that were on a on the rise in the 1930s and and because in America we're looking at this serious juxtaposition between the great depression and then the mm -hmm. rise of of the hollywood star in a, in a new way and i'm sure mm -hmm. makeup really contributed to that because it it helped for this this dreamlike world when you'd go to the movies right and you'd be able to escape but then also it yes. seemed accessible too right because the faces weren't made up in a, in in a drastic way it was a little bit more you know classic beauty right yeah it, it was in in the the uh i mean hollywood played a huge part in in, in makeup um uh at, at the very beginning you know even in the 20s in the silent film era mm, mm -hmm. and in the 30s when you started to have you know talking and color uh, yeah. pictures uh, yeah. because that that made a huge difference to what people wanted to emulate because all of a sudden they could see things in color in in the movies oh so amazing well mm -hmm. i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited to find out more about about the 1930s makeup because i know you have a presentation for us yes and it's like, i've got notes i'm ready okay. to take notes okay <laughs> i'm so excited well, all right well this let me uh, let me get right to it here uh can you see it can yes you see yes 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 everybody mm -hmm. can can see okay Absolutely. all right so so the 1930s face um we're going to talk a little bit about makeup and fashion and film. Sure. Um, if you look at the the face here, you can see that this is kind of the the look, I guess, of the period. You have the eyebrows are uh, plucked thinner uh, at this point and drawn high on the face um, because they wanted to um, be expressive. That's the reason they drew them this way. They wanted the face to be expressive and they use the brows to to do that uh with so at this point the brows were kind of thinner if you don't have thinner brows it's okay you can just pencil them a little longer and, and it, it'll it'll do um you know you don't have to make make them super thin you you can still kind of get away with the look even if you uh, your eyebrows are a little bit thicker um the lashes are nice and curled and darkened with mascara, so you have nice, uh, fluffy type of lashes. Not thick, but uh, but long and uh, uh, and kind of curled. Um, the eyes, they use the pencil, you know, a, a brown pencil to do an eyeliner. Um, they had uh, powders that were generally light colored powders. Uh, and uh, liquid rouge or cream rouge on the cheeks, uh, high on the cheek, on the on the apple of the cheek, um, and the lips are a little bit full, uh, not not as full as when you you know talk about the 40s and the 50s, but they're fuller uh, and not as uh, as kind of bee stung as you saw in the 20s. So a little bit more of a natural uh, silhouette on the lip, uh, in the mounds at the top that flare. 
Um, and then uh, the powder uh, was a little used as foundation because at this point there wasn't really a lot of foundation until the late 30s, you know, 1938, 39, mm. uh, when uh, when the pancake makeup uh, started to uh, emerge. But uh, before that, usually the foundation was really your powder. You would just put on some cream as a base on your face and then the powder would, would uh, be put on top of that and it would stick to the face and provide a foundation basically for you. Um, so in the, in the 1930s, you have a lot, a lot of uh, women started to do more things. You know, they, um, in the 20s, you know, a lot of women uh, went into the city and started working and started having jobs and being uh, what they called an independent woman instead of just marrying and, uh, and being a housewife. A lot of women decided to go into the city. Uh, and part of the reason was because there weren't as many available men as well. Because this, remember, in the war, the First World War, uh, took a lot of lives of, of uh, younger men. And so there weren't as many uh, men to, to, uh, to marry. So a lot of the ladies decided to leave their hometowns and go into the city and uh, seek employment and, mm. and be more independent. Um, and in the 30s, this became even more so. Uh, with women, you know, working in, in factories, working in uh, secretaries, but also engaging in things that they didn't engage in before, like exercise or driving cars uh, or even flying planes, uh, all kinds of things that women really didn't do before then. Uh, because if you remember, just at the turn of the century, you had the Gibson girls that were like really cinched very tight with corsets and a huge hair and feathers and all this. So this was not uh, really a, a type of costume that you could use and, 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 and actually do anything. It was just really to just stand there and not really move. So this, uh, this change in what the women actually did uh, made fashion change. So they needed things that they could move in if they were going to do all these activities. So this is where you see kind of fashion changing into women wearing trousers or women wearing um, looser uh, clothing uh, right. that was not, uh, that did not need a corset uh, uh, to, 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 to work. So you see some, something called uh, the beach pajamas became oh, yes. a popular thing. Uh, <laughs> and, and of course, in the this, you can, you can kind of lounge, you can yes. move around, you can do whatever. So th this became something that, uh, that, that got popular because of the range of movement. I know, knowing Lark and Risa very well, I know they're both big fans of the beach pajama. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and of course, some of the ladies that you saw on the screen were uh, Crawford and, and Mae West and Greta Garbo. Uh, mm. And you can see in all three ladies, the thin eyebrows and the uh, deeper eye and the kind of the, the mouth as, as more of a, a natural shape of a mouth so you don't see really overdrawn uh lips or or anything kind of that looks too o overdone uh here's another uh, another uh set of fa a fashion photo here you can see that the skirts uh got shorter from what mm. they were before uh in the shoes were comfortable so that you can walk because in the city you needed to walk and catch a, a bus or a, a trolley <laughs> And, and you couldn't do it if you had uh, shoes that really weren't designed for walking. Uh, and, uh, and, and of course, the, the uh, hats. Uh, the hats were something that accentuated the bob cuts because at this point, women um, really didn't have the time to take care of very long hair like they did right. at the turn of the century. So a lot of them, when they came to the city, uh, would cut their hair shorter. Uh, and the, the, the way to cut it was this kind of a bob. And of course, the cloche hat was the perfect accessory to bob hair because you could just put it right on top and you could have Love a it. flower on it or, uh, or a feather and it would just provide the perfect accessory and you didn't even have to bother 
with the uh, hair styled as much because you couldn't really see your hair. Yeah. I'm a fan. Of, I'm a fan of this crew. I will say. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think, I think we could hang out. <laughs> yes. So, um, so of course you had people uh, doing, uh, people that had money, of course, partied a lot. There was a lot sure. of people that, that had money, uh, at that, at that time, uh, before the crash you know, of the stock market. There were people that had money and parties. So there were a lot of people that partied. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and you had prohibition in the middle of all of this. So right. you had people that, you know, uh, went to secret bars and drank anyways. <laughs> and the people who did not, <laughs> as you can see on the picture on the, on the right. <laughs> so, so there's a two, two different people that uh, some were really against uh, liquor and uh, and thought uh, that it was uh, really kind of the uh, 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 yes. devil's Dem drink there. Demon uh, rum, they call it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and, and the people who just, you know, really didn't care and wanted to have a good time. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, but you can see the different styles of dresses in this photo. You can see that you had uh, some frilly type of uh, dresses mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, the lower waist type mm -hmm. dress with the cloche hat was yes. very common as well. So, uh, you know, comfortable fashion, really, because these are very comfortable things to wear, actually. Right, right. Uh, they, they're not restrictive in any way. They don't cinch anywhere. Um, and they're pretty flattering, uh, you know, uh, depending on, on, you know, your figure. Your body, but, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, they, they don't really, um, these don't accentuate really a lot of anything. There are other fashions that came out in the same period that were more uh, streamlined to the body and sure. uh, cut in a bias. And, and sure. those dresses, definitely, you you had to be very slim to wear because they, you know, they were very, very uh, form fitting. So, uh, you know, when the Wall, Wall Street crashes, this is when things started to get <laughs> worse for the people who really partied right. a lot and had a lot of money. All mm. of a sudden, they did not have a lot of money. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, this is when, uh, when things, uh, when things change for a lot of mm -hmm. people, uh, mm -hmm. but the movies continue to be something that people look forward to because they were relatively cheap. Uh, at, at this point, people could go to a movie like every week and see something, uh, because it wasn't expensive to do so. And mm -hmm. so people continue to uh, go to the movies and be inspired by the fashion in the, in the movies. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is this is uh, an advertisement that came out during this period that see uh, a lot of men were not into the fact that women were cutting their hair because they liked women with long hair. Uh, so uh, so this this advertisement came out in one of the women's magazines that said, if you must do it, <laughs> if you must <laughs> show this to your barber. So, right. So this you can see how what the different types of cuts yeah um, depending on your hair uh, style or your type of hair that you can sport uh and still have a, a bob now basically. i must ask especially because we were talking about hats and now we're talking about you know these these different haircuts during this period mm -hmm. you know you mentioned you mentioned the the thin eyebrow and mm -hmm. do you feel that because you had uh, I guess I, I just want to know, how does the look of the 1930s face? Of course, we're transitioning from the, the 20s into the 30s. So there's a little bit of that. You know, there's always a, this interesting overlap. But yes. how does that work with the hair and the hat? And, you know, I, I just I always th I think about that sort of, you know, it's the balance in proportions. Yes, yes. Um, part of the reason that, you know, th that the fashion was for the thinner brow is because the, the actresses were, were doing it. But the mm. reason the actresses were doing it was because it came really from the silent film era. During mm. the silent film era, um, there wasn't, uh, obviously, you, you didn't hear the sound and they had to relay expression to you like they were sad they were happy and, mm. and the way that they did this is with the brows so the right. way they drew the brow really signified whether they were in a scene that was happy or in a scene that they were scared or in a scene right. that they were um angry 
so the brows really were part of the act kind mm. of mm. Uh, and and this obviously translated a little bit because you see a lot of people that had taken them off uh, at that time they didn't grow back so they had to continue to pencil them in even though <laughs> they weren't <laughs> yeah like if you, at, if you look at pictures of Clara Bow, you right. can see that she penciled in the brows depending on what uh, what she was thinking or right. what the action was of the of right. that scene right. uh, to uh, to change the direction of them or to change the curvature of of the brow. Um, but after the fact, you know, in the when you get into the thirties, you didn't really need to have it that thin any longer because you right. could hear people's dialogue. Right. Uh, right. But uh, but a lot of people didn't have them, so they continued to have to pencil them in. Uh, so, uh, so that, that style kind of lingered for a while. This sounds, this sounds also like an early 2000s problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of, yes. Like yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot of millennials, yes. a lot of folks remember, uh, that yes. the lack of eyebrow. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a trend, I guess, but they did it, I think for more, um, practical reasons than uh than, than than just fashion reasons you know mm -hmm. um it, it, it started as a very practical reason of really helping the actor re relay an emotion sure. uh, on film uh and then it kind of developed into well now we have them this way let's just pencil them in yeah um, right <laughs> uh, uh you know <laughs> yeah it's kind of interesting. Uh, so the, here's a picture of berets. Berets were kind of big at that time too, because you had shorter hair. Mm. So so any kind of hat that um, was close to the head like this worked well with these shorter hairstyles. So they were very inexpensive to buy berets and they were easy for people to wear. Uh, they didn't need that much care as a hat either. Uh, so. Uh, and then on the on the other side on the on the right here you see the first um, uh, advertisements for pancake makeup, which was mm. uh, the makeup that came out really late 30s, uh, 38, 39. It was used on film first, um, and uh, by uh, 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 all these uh, Carol Lombard and all these actresses, and they um, they kind of. Uh, promoted it in, in advertisements because at this point the the actresses really belonged to the studio. So if, right. for example, Max Factor, who was doing the makeup for everybody in these films and worked for the studio, he had access to these actresses without really paying for them to actually do an ad mm. uh, because they belonged to the studio basically mm -hmm. and he worked for the studio so he had the access to use them and this is how uh kind of uh, celebrity endorsement got got started uh, yeah. it was very cheap for him to use these people to promote him as long as he promoted the film as well as the right. makeup mm -hmm. he was allowed to use them to do so it may have only been max factor back then but now we have so much and especially of course Bessemer. Yeah. I, yes. just wanna, I just want to drop in really quickly. Anybody who's watching, make sure you drop by BessemerCosmetics.com. Check out what they've got going on because uh, it's amazing. And judging from our two friends here, Lark and Risa, look at these faces. Come on. Look at these faces. Those are those are Besame faces, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have several colors that are in the 30s. All our colors have a year. So if you go to our website, you'll see the years right. of all the different lipsticks. But uh, as far as the ones that are from the 1930s, you have uh, Carmine, which is an orangey uh, red, uh, mm -hmm. Noir Red, which is a very dark red from the 30s, right. uh, Cherry Red, which is a more the, berry dark. The 1935 tone. Cherry Red, right? Yeah, Cherry oh, Red. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, yes. It's and amazing. Fair, Ferris red, which is the Snow White uh, red, which is from 1937. Uh, Rice, I, Rice, I have to ask: Are you are you wearing the what? What is what is the lipstick that you're wearing, Rice? Indeed, I am. Um, yeah. Hi. Sorry about the technical difficulties, it's but today uh, I'm wearing classic red today. Ah, and I love I, I you know finding oh, out forever red excuse me forever red. Wait, forever red <laughs> the same one yeah. 
Oh my gosh. And see, oh this, gosh. this is what is so great. I, this is what's so great about, about makeup and about people who appreciate classic beauty. And of course, having a brand like Besame that can help people to translate that for themselves, right? It can look so different. You guys can approach this classic look in your own way. And it looks so, so fantastic, but also so unique to yourselves. It's so good. You're wearing the same mate. You're wearing the same <laughs> lipstick, and it's just like, come on, it's so it's so good. It was a tough choice today, I will say. It was. Mm. It was tough. <laughs> and especially, I mean, speaking of lipstick, I know Gabriella that the lipstick was the first product that you released. Yes. And so you know, I've always been told that if you wanna if you wanna do a vintage look, whatever it is miscellaneous old timey as we sometimes like to call it <laughs> yeah <laughs> do do a strong lip what what is it about lipstick in particular that you feel like really resonates as vintage for people i i think well red lipstick is one of the oldest uh colors that that was manufactured it, it's, mm. it's really uh, uh, lips were always red and just because red lips signified uh you know a woman that was uh uh, you know, fertile and right. strong and mm -hmm. uh, healthy, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, just like red cheeks, you right. know, so so it's always been associated with youth and mm. vigor. Uh, so so red is is quintessentially the color for that. And it's always been associated with that. Um, and that's, I think, why it's been around for so long. And it continues to be a color that uh, you know, that is still popular, that people want right. to wear uh, right. be, because it still represents all those things. Um, the trick is is the right shade, you know, because there are so many types of red. And mm. and, um, and that's why we, um, we reproduce from original ones that we have from all these periods because they really knew how to tailor a red to a specific type of woman or a specific type of, of, of uh, skin and hair and, yeah. and eyes so that it would look correct on, on people. And uh, since they had so many and most of the colors sold were red, um, they had a lot of different colors to do this with. And we took the best ones and we reproduced them again because we think that these are the classiest reds. You know, these are right. reds that always look good no matter who you put them on they they look right um and that's why we continue to make them uh and also the formula has to be um similar to what it was before which was a formula that has uh like triple the amount of pigment in it so it has mm. a, a bottom like a perfume it has a top a bottom and a base type right. of thing so that no matter how the lipstick wears you still have it on you still see the color on um, yeah. because it has an underlying stain, a middle tone, and a top tone. So it's got three layers of protection that it won't come off um, easily. So you can wear it all day long, even though it's right. still just lipstick. It's not a liquid. It's not doesn't have solvents. It's still a very simple uh, formula based on the, uh, the antique ones. Um, but it performs really well, just like the old ones did, where you apply it in the morning and you still have it on at night. And right. that's the idea uh, with this. You, you don't want lipstick that bleeds or goes all over your mouth, especially with right. red, uh, which is really uh, not a good look. Um, <laughs> not, not a good look. The old so, lipstick so on we, the teeth. <laughs> yeah. So, so we worked on this formula for a long time to get it to perform this way yeah. and that's yeah, and that's why it's used so much in hollywood because it does work and mm. it stays put uh and the makeup people don't have to retouch the actors uh, right uh, so and it, and it still looks like lipstick it doesn't look like something else you know because liquid lipsticks don't look the same as lipstick especially right. on high red definition uh film mm. uh, so uh so they have to they have to get the look right and it has to look right uh, in the camera. So mm. these do that and still perform. Uh, as, and, yeah. As long as I've known Risa, she's always worn a red lip. And I, I, I'm interested, especially because there's a lot of people who are watching, who are, are finding their vintage look through makeup right now. Uh, why, why, why red? I wonder what, what, what about the color 
makes you gravitate towards it? Risa. So I have always found it a really empowering color. Mm. And I grew up going to Catholic school and for the first eight years, I couldn't wear any makeup. But when I got to high school, makeup was all I had to Mm. use as a form of self-expression. And I very quickly became known as the girl with the red lipstick. Right. And and I found that it was it was a way to distinguish myself, and and it, I feel like it's it stayed as part of my uh, my overall identity. I don't feel like myself unless I have mm. my lipstick on. Do you feel Do you feel similar, Lark, or is it is it a different thing for you? Um. Yeah. Pretty darn similarly. I think <laughs> a lot of us have <laughs> similar experiences. I mean. Right. Gosh, when we had to start wearing masks and the whole red lipstick thing went away, I was like, my outfit feels incomplete. It feels so <laughs> wrong to me. You know, I have all these lipsticks, pretty much all red sitting around and not getting right. any use. But a big thing for me was also just my skin tone. I have a pretty tricky skin tone because I'm half Turkish. So I have an olive undertone. I mm. tan really easily but i also get really really pale so a lot of colors like the nudes that are popular and stuff just look awful on me and Mm -hmm. when you transition from you know now i stay inside all the time so (laughs) i pretty (laughs) much stay this color but um with the red lipstick you can transition between seasons and i just find it so much easier to wear it never feels like it's clashing I, you know, sometimes I branch out into pinks, like I'll wear Wild Orchid from Besame Cosmetics, which is still pretty much a red pink, but, you know, it just, it's easier to wear. And when I started dressing vintage, it just felt like it was the cherry on top, kind of like the hat is. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so great. I mean, I, I, it, it really is iconic and I, and, and especially as you talk about the undertones in your skin and all this, you know, I remember uh, reading Gabriella that, you know, growing up, finding finding makeup that was right for olive skin, for your skin, was hard to find. And so, and and, and so to have, to have, I mean, t- talk, I guess, Charles, just talk a little bit about that, what, how you found that process. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was difficult because all the colors, um, I mean, especially when I was younger, I mean, the reds were usually just one or two. They didn't really make that many reds, most of the lines, mm. because people, you know, it wasn't a color that I guess they sold a lot of at that right. point. So uh, so the reds were usually uh, very cool, you know, like almost pink red uh, mm. uh, or very orange, you right. know, like like Oof. like a very yeah. orange uh, red like you know like a fire engine red but more orange so both of those do not look good good on me yes uh, right. uh, uh so, so it was very <laughs> difficult yeah, yeah it was very difficult and then and then people would tell you well for your skin tone and that you should use purple shadow and i always hated purple shadow <laughs> and they really? said oh well, but that's the color that looks good with your hazel eyes or whatever and i and i said i don't yeah, I don't same care thing. though about that one because <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> totally um, the same experience. Yeah, right. wasn't it? I mean, they always they used to tell you, no, you, oh, you, yeah, the purple is the color that you should wear for this color <laughs> eyes. And it, it really isn't like that, you know? Mm. Uh, it's really about much more than just one feature in your face. And you know right. what that that feature is, and then match all the colors to that one feature, which doesn't make any sense because you don't see somebody's face and just see their eyes, or just mm-hmm. see their nose, or just see their lips. I mean, you see the whole thing, uh, including their hair. So, kind of the 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 kind of the whole look of the person is that whole experience of the whole face. So depending on the hair color, the eyebrows in, in the skin and all of that, that's the, the colors that would work with that have to kind of work with everything else, not just one single feature of, of mm. the face. Beautiful. I Love usually it. choose, uh, I have many shades of red, but I usually choose my shade based on what I'm wearing and from mm-hmm. what era my vintage clothing is from. Right. So, so, I feel like I, I need very 
a lot of nuance and a lot of variety. And this is why I had so much trouble choosing today. This is my collection. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> These are just my beds. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's, that's awesome. That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you, they did uh, do you know different colors for different outfits. You know, people did mm. do that. Um, there was. Um, uh, let me let me just go through some of these lights here so that yeah um, yeah yeah. Uh, this is an early Technicolor film, so you can see kind of how the colors were really all over the place. Uh, right. And this was the reason Technicolor took so long to actually get on board. Like the studios did not want to make color film. They just wanted to make black and white because it was cheap. Uh, it was easy. And the color just was not very easy to shoot and was super expensive at the time. The only camera really was this huge Technicolor type uh, cameras uh, and projectors. And this was the camera for Technicolor, which it was so expensive because they had to run three films all at the same time. And each one of these films was uh, capturing a different part of the color. Uh, and then they had to put these films all together, splice them all together like yeah, as a sandwich. And that's how you would get the color. So it was very, very expensive. It took massive amount of light to to even light this. I mean, look at this camera and these lights here. It, it's a ridiculous. Uh, That's large. why I have to touch up the makeup because you're you're melting. You're literally melting. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the reason that pancake makeup was really invented because right. the early uh, kind of grease makeup would have totally melted under these lights. Mm. They were so bright that even they blinded people actually mm, uh, on mm, the set yeah. so um so they couldn't really you know the, any kind of grease makeup would not have worked so they needed that pancake which was really uh just a a, a pan of, of powder uh that had cream already mixed into it and then you would activate it with water and then kind of put it on and it would dry uh so it was completely type of a dry type makeup but it worked really well for this film uh, and people continue to go to the theater. And then, uh, and then of course, Walt Disney uh, released uh, Snow White, uh, mm. which was in Technicolor. Uh, and, 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 and in sound, it had high fidelity sound. So she was the one responsible for really getting color film off the ground. You know, when people saw uh, Snow White singing and dancing in color uh, <laughs> and could hear her and see her in color, they you know, you couldn't turn back after that. And there um, you have that red lip. There it is. Exactly. And that's why we named <laughs> Ferris Red, because we, yeah. wanted, we wanted to make um, uh, the color that she wore on the film. And, and the color actually comes from the Disney archive. Uh, right. it's, it's from our collection that we did with Disney. So we went to the archive and actually got the ink, the original ink from 1937, oh. uh, and reproduced the lip color from that ink. Uh, so it's it's the actual color that was on her lips originally in the film, uh, which is a lot uh, uh, softer than what you see now when you watch the film because it's been remastered so many times now that the color is not accurate to uh, to the color that it was originally. Uh, so the one we have is actually the the color that was on the original film. Um, which mm -hmm. is kind of really cool. <laughs> um, it's very cool. Uh, uh, yeah, it's really cool because I, I, I get to go in there and, and play and, and they let me and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's amazing how well it translates to real person too. You know, you mm -hmm. pulled all these colors from actual art palettes and then it's like the way they used to use actual makeup for the artwork. It's such a cool right. Yes. Well, you know, the ink and paint department was all women. So mm -hmm. this, this, you know, when they picked the colors, which they did for all of the character and the blush and the, and the lipstick, it was from their own original makeup that they were wearing. So mm. it, it doesn't surprise me that these colors were something wearable because they would have picked their own colors, you know, whatever they had in their purse. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I, if I was in that group, I definitely would have picked the wrong color. I know that. I would have picked the wrong color. Makeup wise, yes. pick the wrong color for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is pancake. You can see it's just a dry cake. And it was, uh, it, it really was, again, the reason that Technicolor got off the ground because it looks so good in film, uh, this, this type of makeup, because of the fact that 
not only it, people it didn't sweat off the face, but it also uh, because it had uh, titanium in it, it it bounced the lights off uh, because they were so intense. So it made the face look very angelic, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, like this you can see here uh, still from that film from uh, 1938, and you can see how she kind of looks like she has a soft focus filter on. Mm. And uh, this is this is because of the combination of the pancake makeup and the lighting. Uh, and so it, when actresses saw this, they all wanted to be in Technicolor movies because it made everybody kind of look, uh, you know, very, very soft and, and ethereal and, and pretty. Uh, so, you know, it was another reason that the color movies took off. Uh, mm -hmm. Because before this, there really wasn't a lot of reason for the studio to want to pay for this at all. But then, of course, you got all these other Technicolor films that came after, uh, like The Wizard of Oz and, and The right. Gone with the Wind. Um, uh, and again, you see kind of the same type of thing, uh, because they were all using the, uh, the same makeup uh, mm. for, for that as well. Um, uh, you know, er early TV, though, this was early TV was actually transmitted in the negative. So when they had to put on the makeup, they had to do it, uh, uh, you know, with the, the, the highlights and the shadows in the opposite places. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> People think contouring is a new invention. Look at yeah, that. exactly. That's right. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, which was really interesting. So if you actually <laughs> saw these ladies, you would like, not really be afraid. But when they transmitted the the early uh, television uh it would have looked natural <laughs> right oh my gosh isn't that funny uh, love it's, it it's kind of hilarious <laughs> that uh that that uh, was going on uh here you see lucio ball you can see she had very thin brows but this is because again when she was younger and she was a six field uh girl mm. uh she had to shave them off and 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 paint them and then they never grew back after that so then she always had to pencil them in because she didn't really have uh eyebrows so right. so that's why she's always going to have thinner brows and lucy always had thinner brows because she had to pencil them in uh mm. from a very young young age mm. um and uh, you can see some of the true color lipsticks you can see that they're all red they're all different types of red because they had a blonde red a brunette um, a brownette that was in between, a, you know, a brown and black hair, uh, and then uh, redhead. Uh, so they had different types of reds depending mm. on the coloring of the person. Uh, and you can see here uh, different actresses all, you know, talking about the pencils. You know, pencils were actually really big. People use pencils to do their brows and also their eyeliner as well. Uh, cake mascara was also something they used a lot. You can see a lot of the cake mascaras uh, advertised here. Um, pancake uh, was ob obviously something people used a lot. Uh, Max Factor uh, had all kinds of different products for the period. Uh, the Crimson Rouge was something that, you know, you can see the rouge in the middle there. That's, uh, that was the color that was most popular throughout. Uh, the 20s and, and the 30s, uh, there was a lot of this color sold by pretty much every brand because it could adapt to pretty much any skin tone because you use very little of it. Uh, right. And it just kind of looked like blushing cheeks. It didn't really, um, you know, even though it looks really strong, it does, it translates to a very natural looking cheek. Um, so you can see here, more uh, drawings of the brow. You can see how it, it got extended. It, it, it got extended out and so did uh, with um, Jean Harlow as well. She also didn't have the brows, so she painted them on. Um, and then here you can see how uh, they recommended different colors depending on your hair color. Uh, so mm. they recommended different uh, shadows and different lipsticks depending on your hair and your eye color. Uh, this was one of the things that they used to figure out what color would suit you. Um, of course, in the films, people saw all kinds of different types of uh, uh, people. And a lot of exotics came in at this point just because right. people wanted, they wanted to, you know, uh, be entertained in the movies. So the, the movies 
um, uh, because you had Tutankhamun's tomb that uh, that was discovered. So there was a lot of kind of this very exotic uh, look on, mm -hmm. on, uh, on, on actors and actresses of the time just because uh, it was in the news and it right. seemed kind of um, mysterious and far away and, you know, uh, and of course, Betty Davis here, as she, when she was very young, you can see her with her very smart hat and, and uh, uh, very, very pretty outfits. And it's, um, tilt, it's tilted just just above the brow. I see that. Just yes. like, right. you know, just gra grazing <laughs> the eyebrow. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. This is another outfit that was for uh, uh, women, uh, the, the little kind of a suit type mm. thing, but a kind of a day suit with the gloves mm. and, and a belt. And of course the fur, furs were very popular at that point. Uh, if you had a fur, that meant you were, you were definitely had some monies uh, right. because furs were very expensive. Um, uh, and, and then you had, you know, very day dresses uh, a lot of uh, people that had uh, day dresses and uh, for shadows, a lot of the times, you know, people didn't wear shadow during the day. Really, it was not not something that most people used it because it took a little bit more skill to use shadow. And a lot of people were not necessarily that skilled with their makeup. So right. um, shadow was not something that was used a lot. But in the evening, if they were going out and they had um, an outfit that was uh, green or, or or blue, they could use a bit of blue or green shadow, which was available as well, um, and, and put a little bit on their eye just to kind of match their outfit. Uh, that was something people did. Uh, perfumes also w got into the exotic uh, arena with Shalimar and, right. uh, you know, French perfumes coming in and, and, and uh, you know, tobacco type perfumes and heavier, uh, heady perfumes, uh, I, which before this were perfumes were mostly very single note type of perfumes that were florals, mm. light florals. Mm. Um, but then with all this uh, kind of exotics that were coming in and, and uh, uh, Egyptian influences and all of this, um, it influenced perfume as well. And so more uh, heavier perfumes kind of started to be sold and uh, be favored by women. Uh, here you can see more 1930s looks. You can see the lips are, are fairly natural. You can see the elongated brow, a little bit of shading in the eyes. You, you can see that if you were to use shadow, they would put it all over the eye at that point. They wouldn't necessarily put it on the crease. They would just kind of put it everywhere right. uh, because, you know, it wasn't a time where people use more than one shadow. It was more of a single shadow. Uh, so if they used it, they kind of put it all over the eye. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, but if not, they did not use a light. You can you can see there's not a lot of shadowing here. Uh, mm. It's mostly the lip, the brow, the lashes. You know, a really nice uh, fluffy thin lash. Um, there's Myr Myrna Loy right there, uh, right. which is 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 an example. Of, uh, Myrna Loy and um, Claudette Colbert and Carol Lombard all represented kind of a strong female in film. So they weren't necessarily the femme fatale. They were more of the, uh, of the intelligent kind of street right. smart type of lady. Uh, so, so their makeup was, uh, was soft and never, never over the top because they really wanted to seem uh, serious. And uh, if you right. remember Myrna Loy in the Thin Man uh, movies, she, yes. she was always a smart cookie right there that <laughs> figured things out even before her husband figured, figured it out. So, um, uh, and then you see uh, Carol Lombard here. People don't think that they had retouching back then, but they really did. Uh, as you see here, uh, Carol Lombard on a picture on the left that is uh, airbrushed or retouched, you know, with, with at that point they painted over the pictures to mm -hmm. do that or, the, or they painted over the negatives. Um, and on the right, a picture that is not uh, retouch of uh, Carol Lombard. So, so you, you can see that um, even in the 30s uh, and before, uh, pictures were usually retouched for celebrities. 
I gotta um, ask because I, I seeing seeing some of the 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 outfit photos and and of course some of these looks, I, I you know because we have um, well I have a fascinating voyage coming up next year, and of course yes. ahoy ahoy vintage cruises. I mean I I've gotta ask about about travel makeup about putting together travel looks. What are your recommendations for people, whether it be uh, uh, a weekend trip or uh, a full week set of sail, the Queen Mary 2 from London to New York. What what would you recommend when it comes to putting together a, a travel, you know, your your travel makeup? Well, I I, I would recommend, you know, makeup in this era and in, in all vintage makeup, really, it's all about less is more. You, yeah. you don't really need a lot of things. Uh, mm. th this is very minimal makeup. You don't need a ton of stuff to get this look. Uh, so you need uh, multi, if you can get multi-purpose products, obviously that helps because then you can do the same, you can use one product to do several things. Right. Um, uh, so for example, uh, for us, all of our products or most of them have, have double or triple use. So you can use them for a lot of stuff. Uh, right. For example, our cake mascara, you can take that cake, use it for your brows, uh, use it for your lashes, and use it for your eyeliner. So that product, mm. you can use it for all of, all of it. Uh, it's not, um, uh, it's, it, it doesn't actually uh, uh, come off with uh, just regular moisture if there's moisture in the air, or right. if you perspire, it, it wouldn't come off either. So, so it's a really nice product because you could wash it off easily at night when you go into your cabin. But it will it will stay on. But it does have all these different uses, so you can really use it for a lot of things, even to retouch uh, your hair if you need it to. Because right. uh, this product originally was made in the 1800s for men, and it was used to do their sideburns and mustaches and all that kind of stuff. And they would fill it in with this. Um, okay. So, so it's a very multi-purpose. Uh, the uh, cream rouge is another one that you can use for a lot of things. You can put a little bit on your lips if you want. You can put it in, obviously, on your cheeks. Mm. Um, uh, you can use it for pretty much any part of the face. Uh, it, easy, easy to use, and it'll stay on. Um, your lipstick, of course, you know, pick, pick right. a color or a couple of colors for your different outfits. Uh, yeah. And then once you put it on... Uh, in the morning, uh, use a brush to put on your lipstick. It really makes the, the lipstick last longer, but mm. it also, um, it, you can put it on better uh, without having to use a pencil to, to line the lips if you don't want to. Uh, but it also uh, makes the lipstick last longer on because you put it on in like thin layers, you know, just right. one and then put a little bit more and another one. And it just keeps the lipstick on longer that way. Uh, especially if you powder very lightly between layers and then just put another layer on, uh, that will make sure that lipstick does not budge. Um, right. And especially trans and what about transitioning from, from day to night? So, you know, you're, you've spent all day hanging out on deck, promenading throughout the mm -hmm. ship. And then, and mm -hmm. then, you know, a little bit later at night, the band's starting to kick up and you want to, you know, put on something that's maybe a, a gown or, or something, something different. How is your, how do you, uh, how do you recommend transitioning that makeup, especially since it lasts all day? Well, um, on your lips, just put a, a, you know, blot your lips and then apply a new layer or top layer of a darker uh, color mm. of lipstick. Um, mm. And then it'll just keep going. Uh, add a little bit more rouge to the cheeks. So take your cream blush and add a little bit more of the cream uh, blush. Um, uh, and add a tiny bit of uh, shadow to the corners yeah. of your eyes, uh, just, you know, either a brown uh, or a gray, uh, but something neutral that is not really a color, but is, is intended to shade the eye, not right. add color to it. Mm. Um, because that's how they use shadow at this point. They didn't use it necessarily to add color to the face. They use it to add depth to the eye by right. shading the crease and shading where the eye bends so that it calls attention to the shape, but not necessarily color wise. That, I mean, 
you're when you say less is more that's it that sounds exactly like it, it sounds exactly like it yeah less is more a, a powder you know that you can touch up if you get uh uh sweaty and you want to touch up your your makeup uh, a good powder that doesn't build up uh too much is great and uh for us our powder like if you take the snow 1937 powder that's a mm. great powder as a translucent to use all day and just to uh, you know, take off a bit of shine, uh, right. and uh, it's 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 a really nice powder for that. And uh, we have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, powder compacts that you can get uh, for that. Uh, I can uh, I can show you actually. I have yeah. a sneak peek at yeah, my please. Uh, new powder. Uh, please, here. because Lydia, because Lydia, Lydia just asked in the chat what what sort of powder to use yes. between those layers. So please, please show us. Yeah, let me um, let me see if I can go back to being out here. Can you see me? Yeah, you can see yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right. This is our new. Oh my god! Brand gosh. brand new, and this is the first look of it. Our travel compact. And it's Wait, super is this slim. an exclusive right now? Are you showing it us is. an exclusive product right now? It is. Yo, alarm yeah. bells right now. Go, go, please. It is. This is exclusive. <laughs> this has not come out yet. It's going to come out. <laughs> uh next next week uh yes. so it's our new very slim travel compact very slim super slim and it's designed from uh a 1959 mold so mm. it's kind of like a, a very 50s kind of uh sputnik uh looking kind of thing so it's got a kind of a uh a bigger bottom and a smaller top right. uh and then on the top here you have the powder in there ah. uh, and it is refillable. So it's got a little bit of a divot right on the top there. So you can pull the, the powder out um, and it looks like that with the magnet on the inside. So right. any powder will just stick right in uh, and it's super light, uh, very slim and light. So you can put it in any little bag. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the powders come with their own puff. So it comes right. with a puff inside. Uh, but yeah, this, this is coming out next week. And, That's and, and what is it? And what is it called? Just so that people it's can called write travel it. Travel huh? compact. Yeah. It's our oh. travel compact. Come on. See Vivian, yes. Vivian already said, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. A and travel. Put, yeah. Go on, go on. Any refill in this, you can put yeah. any refill you like, so it'll mm. fit any of the powders that we stock. Uh, so you can take several ones and put different powders on them, but really easy. It doesn't scratch. It has a really uh, thick coating on the top. It won't come off or scratch if you stick it in your luggage anywhere. Right. And it's very small and, and, and very light. A light travel compact that can fit in any purse or yes. if your dress has pockets. Exactly. Yeah, because all that. dresses yeah. need to have pockets. Yes. But nobody's seen this compact yet. So you are oh the first ones to God. see it. <laughs> Exclusive, folks. This is why you've got to hang out with Gabriella, why you've got to hang out with Ahoy Vintage Cruises, because you get these exclusives. I'm just yeah. saying, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so a, a, a pencil is, you know, so I would recommend, you know, your a compact of some kind. Yeah, your pencil, you know, mm -hmm. like a brown or black pencil, if you're going to do uh, your liner, this is a right. very easy pencil, it, it, you know, you, you can't go wrong with this one. It's uh, extra long, uh, it's made in Italy, uh, and it's old-fashioned formula here. Right. Um, and, uh, and it's, you know, you can put it, you don't even have to have really any kind of dexterity to use this, this product, you know. You can mm. put it on really messy just kind of like just put it on that line even if it's messy and then take any brush and just just you know pull it into place so you right. don't really have to have to have a, you know really any kind of uh, skill level with it or even if your hands aren't as steady no problem it, you can't go wrong you you can you can just just with a little brush just fix it and it looks looks great perfect um, perfect and then, uh, this is the rouge by the way like yeah, this is the crimson rouge. So this is the color that most likely you, you would use during the 1930s. 
yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. a color you can use anywhere. It's it's transparent. It doesn't have any white. So when you use this, see, you, you, you can put it on and you see. Ah. You see, it just it just gives you. And then if you don't like it or you put too much, just spread it around like this. And it fits. Beautiful. So you can use more or less of it. Um, but but it, 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 it works on pretty much any any skin tone at all. Um, a brush, remember a brush for your lipstick, you know. Sure. Uh, one that has a cover is good so that it doesn't get dirty in your luggage. Um, cake mascara uh, that has a little brush on the inside already. So you, you already have a brush, but if you want a larger brush, we do have some uh, larger brushes, but the cake is in here. It comes in brown and in black. So if you want to use for your brows, the brown one works uh, well for that. Um, or if you have darker brows, you can use the black as well. Just use a little bit more water so it gets a little thinner and the brows look more natural when you draw them in. Um, but otherwise, you know, you can use it anywhere on the face. Amazing. I love these. I mean, I love these tips because I mean, people are lighting up in the chat because it's like to think about, okay, sure. You, 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 you got the lipstick, you just use it, but yeah. to be using it with a brush, to be applying it almost surgically, darling, you know what I mean? Yes. You know, yes. why, yes. why not? Risa, I have to ask you when it comes to travel makeup, what is your, what is your go-to when you're on the go? Oh, goodness. Because um, you're always on the go. It is a Besame Compact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is uh, the one that had the the little Dior mm -hmm. new look looking illustration on it. And, and yeah. Oh, have, yes. If I have to bring yeah. one thing, that's it. Wow. Yes. Well, yeah, that, that one, uh, all the powders for that now are refills. So mm. any of the compacts that we make all fit all the refills. So any of those powders that we've made and we have like 10 different ones on the website now, you can all put, put them all into this compact or any of the other compacts That's that we excited. make. Uh, you can, you can use it. <laughs> you can use it in that. Lark, what's your, what's your go-to travel makeup item? What is, what is your, you know, let me know. Ooh, it's, well, it's hard. It takes three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do one thing. Um, do but I'm gonna go with a lip brush. Oh. Open lipstick itself. Mm -hmm. Just because I find it's easy if anything moves at all, no matter what brand. Well, unless it's liquid lipsticks, which I never wear. But right. the lip brush just helps kind of smooth things out and I can mm -hmm. clean up that way. But honestly speaking, I always have a lipstick, lip brush, and then the Best May compact with the Snow White translucent powder in it right now with me. So not a one proof. <laughs> <one night. laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I think I think I think Risa was going for one, but if I was to say, hey Risa, open your bag. <laughs> oh, I don't think yeah. you're ready. That bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. This is what's in that bag. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I need all eight shades when I travel. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. well, they, they all have a different personality, you know, yeah. some shades, you know, are, are if you want like a, a more vampy look, you're wearing something darker and you want to, you know, uh, look a, a little bit more um, gothic, maybe, you know, mm. uh, or gothic mm. inspired. Uh, the darker colors do really well, like the blood red, uh, you know, is, is a color that if you want that really deep, rich color, um, mm. you can get it with, with that um cherry can get dark uh but not as dark as 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 the blood red um that that color is definitely more um uh you know flapper like you right. know so if you right. want that really especially if you have that kind of a bo straight bob hair and you want that really stark uh, look uh that color really works very well for that Oh, so amazing. And I mean, what, since we're talking about varieties of things, I know that you have quite a few holiday bundles on the website, bessemecosmetics.com. Can you yes. please, because you know, I love a holiday bundle, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> if we're going to do it, let's there do it. Go. Please tell us what's going on. 
Well, we have uh, all the lashes uh, on a bundle. So if you like to play around with different decades, we have 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s lashes all, all right. in one bundle. So if you want to play around with the different lashes from different eras, yeah, they're all yeah. there. Um, they're all different because every era had different type of lash. So, um, so if you, the 1920s ones have the little balls at so the cool. end that they used to do, uh, right. with the, you know, with the, with the wax. Uh, so if you want to play around with those, uh, they're, uh, they're all different and they're all really fun. So, so you can get different looks with those lashes. Um, we have a, our long hairbrush back. We haven't had it for a long time, but it's back. It's, this one is a replica of the Max Factor brush that he uh-huh. used to use to, um, yeah, because before they, remember I told you they had um, cream on the base yeah. and then they put a lot of powder. And so in order to get that powder to kind of mesh together with the cream and blend it, they would use a brush like this and then just kind of buff the whole face like this with it. Uh, and, and, and that would make it very, very smooth uh, so that you wouldn't be able to see the powder in any of the creases anywhere. So, so this is a, a replica of that brush. So right. we have this one in stock um, back now uh, after a while. So, so if you uh, want a larger brush that so you can use on the face and, and also the neckline and all that too. Right, right, uh, right. Yeah, any kind of powder or even like a little shimmer if you want to add a bit of a shimmer to your shoulders, you can do that uh, with this guy. Um, we have a, a vampy bundle of, of uh, uh, lipsticks that has the, the noir, the blood red, and the cherry, so our darkest shades, all of our darkest colors, um, which, you know, are, this is, this is the uh, cherry. So you can see cherry is like- Oh, come on. Color. That's a great color. That's a great color. It is a cool color. Um, then, uh, but noir is even darker. You can see it here. Perfect for uh, noir November, which we're in right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, indeed. So, yeah. So if you if you want something really really dark, uh, you know these two are great. Uh, let me see cherry, and you can see the difference between the two right there. Love That's it. That's noir on the top and cherry on the bottom. Beautiful. So you can see those those are in one bundle, uh, mm-hmm. and it's called the Vampy bundle there. So it has uh, Noir, Blood, and Cherry Red. Uh, the nail care kit is cool, too, if you do your own nails. I mean, it includes everything that you need to do your nails. If you uh, like to do your nails or uh, or can go, I don't know if the ship, the ship probably has some kind of place to do your nails. But um, if you want to yes, do yeah, your nails. Yeah, there is a, there is a, um. On board, there is a nail salon. There's a whole spa. There you go. Board. So you can get your nails done. But we do have matching colors uh, for right. uh, several of these lipsticks. So if you want to take your own nail color so it matches your lips, right? You can uh, right. you can you can get the uh, the nail color uh, as an add-on for your lipstick, and then have both both of them match. Um, right. Right. Uh, right. We have. Uh, some of our Marilyn Monroe stuff is on on some of these bundles because we're yeah, yeah. Uh, phasing out the, the the Marilyn. We we uh, uh, we did it as a license with the Marilyn right. Estate. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so there is some some Marilyn things on there, uh, especially the eye one that has the eyeliner, uh, lip liners, and mascara and sharpener. So if you need liners. Uh, in a mascara that um, that is just a, a more of a tube mascara, uh, the Marilyn set is a really good right. deal for that because you get all of the pencils and mascara and, and sharpener all in and, one. And speaking of Marilyn, the the one of the most iconic blondes, if not the most iconic blonde, we have a, a beautiful question: Cocktails with Lisa. Um, what's your favorite shade for blonde for pale blondes? For pale blondes, uh, well, uh, because it just so happens that we're all br- like everyone's brunettes on this chat, right? Yes, I was like, I was like, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, well, the um, our 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 most popular res for that would be Victory Red, uh, right. which is which is a color from World War Two. Yes. Uh, it, it's a it's a great, very bright color, but it's very 
uh, vivid and pretty. It looks good on most people, but it looks great on, on, on lighter skin for sure. Right, uh, right. And if you want something a little pinker, if you like more pink, pink side reds, uh, American Beauty is also a really great color right, for that right. skin tone, but it's a little bit more uh, on the pinky side of red. Uh, right. So, so it depends depends what you like, but um, Besame Red is also a good choice for lighter lighter skin tones as well. Oh my gosh! I think we're gonna do the full gamut. How about redheads? Let's do it. <laughs> redheads, you know, there there is a color. Um, what redheads for for red? I would say red hot red, which is Marilyn Monroe's mm. red. That one right. looks really nice on redheads. It also looks good on 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 obviously blondes like like Marilyn. So red hot red is a nice color for that, but it looks great if you have uh, red hair. Also chocolate kiss, even though it, it's called chocolate kiss on people that are um, redheads, it looks reddish, but it looks really nice on because it has mm. a brownish tint to it. Uh, right. So chocolate kiss is one of the favorite shades for uh, people that have red hair. And I love that we're we're talking about all these lipsticks, all these 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 uh these cake mascaras. But for everyone who's watching right now, you have you have entered into um a drawing. You may win one of the 1930s lipsticks and cake mascaras. So um we're gonna be letting you know who won that in just a moment because I mean I'm excited and I don't even wear this stuff. <laughs> 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 and uh you know i mean i think especially t especially listening to this conversation about 1930s makeup i mean i want to even thinking about some of the the black and white films i want to watch a fred and ginger film and go like what is ginger wearing what's going on oh yes you know oh, what i mean yeah. what yes. can i discern even though it's black and white you know yes what <laughs> the thin men films those are so much fun right i love the thin with uh with Powell and and uh, and and uh, her, you know, just and and Myrna Loy, it just it's just a, a good time. Uh, right. Also, it happened one night. If you haven't seen, oh. it happened one night with oh, Clark Gable. Amazing, and, amazing. Uh, Claudette Colbert watched that film because it's really the um, it's the first uh, actually example of like a, a comic, uh, a comedic, uh, you know, kind of road movie like right. a, a romantic comedy. It's kind of the 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 first kind of romantic comedy uh, type of film, uh, so I I, I I really enjoy that film. If you uh, if you have time to watch it, amazing, it's a good one. Uh, so good. And speaking of speaking of winners, we actually do have our winner, Julia Stack. Julia Stack, congratulations! Can we give Julia a round of applause? A little. A little <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for watching today and for uh and congratulations for winning julia you have the chance of uh of choosing from one of the 1930s uh shades you know carmine cherry red ferris red noir red because it's noir november congratulations julia we'll talk to you in just a moment don't worry we'll sort you out we'll sort you out um, we have a question from Rebecca, and then I think we're gonna be we're gonna start to wrap it up. But um, this is a very, very important question. How about a shade for cool tone dark skin women? Cool tone dark skin women. Um, mm. I would say um, cherry red is a really nice shade on, mm -hmm, on darker mm -hmm. skin. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. It is a cooler shade. Right. Uh, and it looks it looks really good on. I would say um, there's uh, quite a few people. Red, I like yeah, that. Forever Red is also very good if you want a red. Right. Um, uh, the cherry is, is more like a deep berry, but uh, but the Forever Red is more red, but it's very neutral. Uh, so mm. so even if you have a cooler skin tone, it would it looks looks really nice. Um, I I can almost I can almost see Angelique Noir wearing that in my head. I can I can see her wearing that. So yes, far. yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> we have several ladies that wear our colors. They wear all yeah. kinds, you know. Really, even the orange ones, you know, the orangey red, like carmine, which is kind of an orangey color. Right, right. Here, this one is carmine here. Oh um, yeah. 
Beautiful. So it, it's a very quintessential 1930s because there was a, really a love for all orange, orange mm -hmm. uh, blossom, orange perfume, orange everything. Uh, and it came kind of from the Art Deco, Art Nouveau uh, type era to have oranges and blacks and things right, like this. Right. So orange was a very popular color on, on, um, for women in fashion as well as in makeup. So they had uh, an orangey type of red lip, which is this color right here, which is called Carmine. I can show it here for you to see so you can see. Oh, it. beautiful. So, oh, yeah. That that that's that's definitely a lovely day, a day lip. Yes, it is. It's very, it's very nice for day. And depending on the your skin color, it looks different. You know, so right, it can course. look more red on certain sure. people because sure. obviously, depending on if your color of your lips is more pink, uh, mm. so it kind of changes. If your if your lips are darker, obviously, it takes on a little darker of a, a tone. So right. yeah, keep that in mind when you see uh, swatches of lip color that it might translate differently on right. because of the color of your lips themselves. So, it, so it's best to try a lot of them. <laughs> try them, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes. If, yeah, if anybody's close to Burbank, come to our shop and try right. everything. You know, uh, the girls have, uh, you know, the patience of a saint right there. Right, they will, right. They will just you know yeah. you could try anything and walk away yeah. and they'll be fine so just go in there and play if you have time uh because uh it's a lot of fun to go right. in there. i have a whole museum in the shop so if you have time to go uh check it out uh in burbank uh you're yeah. welcome to come and of course make sure you check out besamecosmetics.com for those holiday bundles next week yes. on instagram we are actually going to be doing another contest and the winner of that mm -hmm. contest will be uh getting their hands on one of those holiday bundles. So uh, make sure you keep an eye on uh, Ahoy Vintage Cruises uh, Instagram account. And, uh, you know, while you're perusing and spending time there, you know, why not find out about the fascinating voyage that I'm doing, uh, you know, coming October 2022, we're going to be traveling on the Queen Mary 2 from London to New York. Uh, and you might see some familiar faces on that crossing, so why not? Um, it's uh, It's been an incredible pleasure to hang out with you today, with all of you. Gabriella, thank you so much oh, for being here. Oh, so, thank it's, you. It's been such a pleasure. Um, also want to thank Lark and Risa for hanging out. Um, Lark, where can people find find you on Instagram? What is your Instagram? Uh, my handle is Miss spelled out M I S S L A R K B A H A R, which is my middle name and what I there go by in Turkey. So find Beautiful. me. Like Bahar. And then Risa, where can people find you on Instagram? Uh, my Instagram handle is just my name at Risa Britannia without the tilde. But, uh, but yeah, you can just find me using my right. name. And then the queen, the Besame girl herself, <laughs> Gabriella, where can people find you? Actually, uh, if you want uh, me directly, it's just Besame girl yes. on Instagram. And, right. uh, and if you want to see uh, Besame, Besame Cosmetics uh, has right. its own Instagram. But, uh, but if you want to follow me, I'm at uh, Besame girl. Great. All that stuff will be in the link down in the description below. It has been a true True honor, a true pleasure hanging out with you ladies this afternoon. Um, thanks so much to everyone at home who's been watching. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled to ahoyvintage.com. My name's Dandy Wellington. Have a wonderful, safe, and fabulous day. We'll see you soon. My name's Dandy Wellington, inviting you to join me on a fascinating voyage. We'll be crossing the Atlantic Ocean from London to New York aboard Cunard's world famous Queen Mary II. Travel the sea in style on this vintage themed seven day passage. I'll be hosting private parties with my band in the largest ballroom at sea. I crossed the ocean Plus, daily activities will give you an opportunity to show off your vintage style. 
I can't wait to set sail.